how do people navigate through video? You have a search, a video search engine. Um, you know, what kind of insights have you found in terms of of uh, what gets consumed? Is it is it the mainstream stuff versus the long tail stuff? And how monetizable do you think the long tail stuff is? Sure. Um, so lots of points there. Um, the what we found that's really interesting is that actually professional content is as consumable and as popular with the generic general audience as UGC is. Um, there's a you know, big temptation to think that UGC is, is really the only content type that's working on the, on the mass scale on the web, and certainly the numbers stack that way today. But when we've played around with things on our site where we've sort of pushed professional content um, you know, either either inflated it in the search indices or pushed it more on the front page, for example, we get plenty of people who watch um, professional content who the day before would have watched a, a YouTube video or a Meta Cafe video or whatever. So um, that's an interesting thing. I think that today it's so early, frankly, in this space that people are still, um, you know, people still associate a lot of online video with user-generated content. The two things are, are one in their heads. And when they, when they go on the web to look at video, they don't always think of the fact that there's also lots of great CNN video or MSNBC video or, or anything else, as they begin to discover that more and realize they can watch the same content they've watched on their television online, they do it more and more. Hulu's been a big, I think, you know, um, uh, uh, a big sort of factor in that, just it, the, the realization that, oh, I can actually watch all of this stuff on my computer as well. Um, so th that's from a sort of audience demand point of view. Um, from an advertiser point of view, um, you know, uh, we sell advertising on our site and also for, for a number of our partners and th there's no doubt every agency um, and advertiser that we talk to apart from a, a tiny minority who are doing sort of specialist things absolutely care a lot about the the quality and the brand of the content they're advertising against. It's partly a consistency issue, I think. Obviously, people don't want to advertise against something that could be illegal or inappropriate or whatever else. Um, but it's also about you know going with what you already know. I mean, you know what the effects are of putting your brand against this particular show or that particular you know channel or whatever else it might be. And, and UGC is a, is a new beast, and so it's, it's difficult to sort of track it. Um, What's your sense of what percentage of the streams that are out there are, are uh, you could put advertising up against. Yeah, sure. So, um, uh, you know, you can play games with that statistically. Um, I would say that probably most streams are monetized, but that's because most of them are monetized through non-video specific monetization, whether it's display banners on the page or whatever else, which is why it's interesting to hear David say that um, that your stats are about actual in-video advertising. I think if you look at in-video advertising, so things like pre-rolls, things that are designed for the video itself, are tied explicitly to the content, not just on the page generally, I would guess that the the percentages um, vary massively in the sense that I'm sure that professional content is up to 80, 90 percent monetized, and I would guess that UGC content is probably more like 10 to 20 percent monetized. So you get a complete diversion there, depending on the content type. Certainly, what we see. If you look at demand on our site, um, you know, much, much more demand for the professional content. The, the final thing I'd say is, you know, in, in talking about the economy right now, if you know, everyone said that. You know, so some people said that. You know, Display advertising has already been hit in the results that we've seen so far from some of the bigger firms. Um, what's interesting, of course, is that search advertising hasn't been hit as hard. Um, in fact, very little at all. It seems it looks like Yahoo's you know, primary benefit in the results were, were the fact that search advertising has done very well. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot to learn from that with online video. You know, why does search advertising work? And how can you apply the things that work about search advertising in the text search world into online video? And I would argue that it's actually a lot of the things that Gina just mentioned. It's partly about targetability. Um, you know, the reason people like search advertising is because they know exactly what their ad is appearing against. That's something that can be done with video if you have the right technology. Um, it's a big thing that we're pushing on right now. And then the second thing is basically the tracking and measurement of success. You know, the great thing about search is you know that you paid for something because something actually happened. And again, whether you do that economically through a filter like, you know, a, a cost per click measure, so you only pay if something works, or whether you do it through just targeting and saying, I only want my ad to appear against exactly this kind of video. If you can start to deliver that kind of promise to the advertiser, I think there's a lot of potential there for video <coughs> content as well. Can some of the other people talk about what is the measure of success for advertising?